Hello and welcome back to Nerd News Today, Toy Fair 2021. Now joining us on the other side of the screen and all the way on the other side of the world, we have Ivan Rajkovic. Uh, he is the creator, or one of the creators, of the Forest of Rod Ghost board game, which is now on Kickstarter. Ivan, how are you today? Uh, fine. Thank you for letting me join this and uh, present the Forest of Rod Ghost game. I'm one of the, the three main designers, which is my wife and my son. Actually, my son is the main reason to start this project. We didn't even plan to make it public or even to go to the Kickstarter at the beginning. It was just a way to spend quality time with my son. That's really great. That's really one of the things that attracted me to this game was how it's a whole family endeavor to make this. And that's really beautiful. Yes, <laughs> it's actually it's a nice, nice way to test your family because there is ups and there is down. <laughs> and if you go through the whole project like board game, which is more or less like you want to stage opera, it's, uh, it's much more complex than I thought at, at the beginning. That's a good comparison. Uh, so Ivan, where are you in the world? Well, we are in Belgrade, Serbia. So it's a uh, southern part, let's say, of Europe, near to Italy and uh, north of Greece, for those that are not uh, too familiar with this part of uh, the world. We are not exactly part of EU, but uh, geographically, we are part of Europe. And your game, Forest of Rod Ghost, has a lot to do with Slavic mythology. We're going to talk about that in a few moments. But uh, first, Ivan, I'd like to ask you, what was your favorite toy as a kid growing up? Actually, it may sound strange, but my favorite toy was the park nearby my, my uh, building, where we play role-play games. The favorite tools were, were whatever we find in park and we imagine that it's gun or something like that or tomahawk or something. So that, that, that was my favorite to, uh, toy. But of course, there, there, there was uh, uh, Lego. Lego was one of the, but it was very, very rare occasion to, to buy a Lego in that time. And so the, more or less, uh, I, I will say uh, the, the toys that we made ourselves and Lego. Did you play a lot of board games growing up as well? Yes, but not this kind of board games uh, because Serbia at that time, especially Khrushchev, which is my hometown, uh, we didn't have a big selection of those. So basically Monopoly and maybe one more and anything that uh, we came up with. So because we really like the uh, role play games and really like tabletop games, but because you cannot buy it, we, we practically start inventing them. And that's how actually I find out that making the game there is more fun, more creativity than playing a game. So basically, we enjoyed making the board games and playing the board games in the same time. And some board games we developed through the several years. So we started playing one year and then just develop the rules and develop and develop and new characters and so on and so on. And that's actually the reason why I started doing that again with my son, because I needed something that would be interesting for me but also interesting for him. And making a game was like, wow, that, 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 that could work. So it, it, it worked actually. So it, I, I could freely suggest to anybody to make the game with their child. They, they don't have to go to Kickstarter. They don't have to make it big as this. That's not the recommendation, but to make some game with their child, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, I think that's a really great story. You know, I said hi to your son, Dimitri, before. He's the inspiration for this game. So can you kind of talk to us about the story of Forest of Rod Ghost and how it came to be, how you got this idea and how you put it all together? Yeah, uh, as I said, I, the idea was to spend some quality time. He was eight at that time. So we, we, we needed a middle ground where he can participate and I can participate in same measure. So it's not too advanced for him and not too simple for me. So th that was the excellent melting pot for decisions. But uh, the, the how to choose uh, what will be in the game was actually a pretty interesting re revelation to me. Because I'm big fan of fantasy and big fan of mythology and big fan of all Greek, Egyptian, Norse. And then I realized that I don't know Slavic mythology, at least not on the level that I know those other popular mythologies, especially Greek and Norse. That should be changed. 
And I would really love for Dimitri to learn about our cultural heritage and everything. So uh, we started by lending some books, buying some books and going through the, first we were interested in the creatures because in Slavic mythology, uh, as far as after these years of research, I I'm aware there is not much uh, reliable sources about the gods. So you can find much more stories and everything in details about the creatures, but gods are pretty, you cannot be sure about them and there is not a lot of materials. And we really wanted to have real material based on scientific facts and something that can be checked and have real value because if something lasts, let's say 3000 years, 5000 years and still is actual telling that story again and again, it stood to the test of the time. So it must have some deeper value than just a story. So that's how it started. And of course, Dimitri, like any child, creatures are very, very interesting in Slavic mythology and there is a plenty of them. And so it started from creatures and Slavic mythology. And then we go to the story premise. Of course, there should be uh, children because Dimitri is children. So we had to have some children in the story. To, to be honest, I was tired of, of from all these uh, heroes and uh, saving the world and uh, epic journeys, fighting with gods and all those stuff. And we wanted to bring something more, something that is common to all the people. So you are not fighting the god or so, so everybody could relate to the lost, to being lost in the forest. And everybody could relate to children being lost in the forest. We said, oh, we, we, we could have taboo because it's sacred forest and you shouldn't enter. So you must break taboo to save the children. So it's, it's not clear positive thing. You're doing something you shouldn't do and you are doing something you should do. It's also, we really tried to put as much as feeling of real life in there so you can really immerse in the story and get lost in all those and in the same time learn a lot of things about mythology, about the creatures. We choose one god, it is Radgost. Radgost is actually god of hospitality among other things. And idea was, let's say that it was time when the creatures are uh, endangered by the people. So we wanted to say, okay, this is sacred forest and Radgost give hospitality to these creatures. And in the Slavic culture, Hospitality is very important. So you must treat your guests very polite and give him everything that you give to the closest member of your family. It's everywhere, more, more or less is like that. But we, what we wanted to achieve is another layer, which is also uh, part of hospitality is that you have to offer protection. So one of the reasons why uh, Radgos is uh, very uh, often uh, portrayed with the uh, bread, and the ax or some weapon is because I offer you protection and I offer you hospitality, warmth and food. And that was good because Dimitri has one very uh, specific condition. No creature may or should be killed in the game. So Radgost forbid you to enter the forest. It's strictly forbid to kill the, the creature. So you have to find another way to, to rescue the children and to stay alive for your sake and so on. So that, that was the, the starting point. And then it just kept going. We had a few beautiful uh, uh, cardboard drawn by Dimitri. Dimitri actually drawn the first map. After a few rounds that we played, we finally get attention of my wife, Alexandra. And she's actually was not that thrilled with our game. Because yes, you have the forest, you have the lost children, you have all those fine details. It's packed with action, but she said, you know, I miss something here. She was right. So basically, our, while you are moving through the forest, trying to find the children, you all the time wanting to meet the creature for something to happen. So basically there was moves where nothing happened except you're roaming the forest. And that could be a little bit disappointing. And then she introduced the cards. So we basically introduced exploring the forest. So in each move where you don't have some kind of encounter with the creature or some strong action, 
where you have opportunity to explore, you can explore a forest through drawing the cards from white deck. One deck then exploded in nine decks and that become more than 200 cards. Most of the things was plants, objects, or anything that has some value or belief in, with Slavic people. And then we had one play test with, that was very important uh, with one neighbor. And she said, you know, I know that you're speaking about mythology, but you have all the ingredients of the fairy tales. And we sit down and after that, we started to, to read and more about fairy tales, not only folk tales, but fairy tales and everything. And we find out there is a big intersection between that. So we introduced more things from fairy tales. You don't have a chance to play the game and to get the same story. No chance because the number of combination and everything that can happen with 200 different cards and 21 creature with four action that you can choose and all the things that you make in the meantime, it makes all almost impossible to get the same story. Approximately now it lasts around 45 minutes to 90 minutes. Depending That's a pretty good amount of time. Story. Yes, depending of, and you usually get very rounded story from it. And there is a lot of, of sub scenarios and different things. And of course, um, as, as my wife always do, she then expanded scope and then she added personal missions because she said, okay, let's make it even better. What is personal mission? Okay, you are called to go to the forest to save the children. But what happened uh, with you? Why you are the chosen one? There is no two characters that are similar. So Zhrez, which is practically... Uh, some kind of uh, sorcerer or uh, there is no right uh, word to translate it because he was doing um, multiple uh, roles in uh, all, with uh, old Slavic. So basically he was priest, but he was sorcerer in the same time and so like on. A shaman maybe? A uh, shaman is the best uh, and the closest word, but with Slavic people it is Zhrez. Okay. So there is no translation because nobody used that. And he chose different uh, kind of characters because you cannot kill the creatures. You shouldn't kill the creatures. So you do not need only warriors and strong. So you have two elderly, which is uh, uh, ex-chieftain uh, and a healer, which is grandmother and grandfather, if we speak about the age. Then you have two young, which one is hunter and other is priestess. So you have diverse type of capability with characters, diverse stories, and Red choose them and send them in the forest because of their capabilities, but also because he knows that they bear something with them they could solve by going in the forest and finding something there. And that this is the rare, rare opportunity for that. So I think what it sounds like is that the game has a lot of random encounters. And when I was reading about the game, it reminded me of board games like uh, there's Dungeons and Dragons series. Uh, one of the games is like Legend of Drist, and there's other games like that. Uh, it reminded me of Betrayal in the House on the Hill because, again, uh, just so many yeah. random elements to it, and there's also narrative built into the story. So for people who are interested in this game, what board games would you compare it to? It's a hard question because we really uh, added some very unique things because we are indie designers and we didn't follow too much what is industry standard. We, we get comparisons with Talisman and get comparisons with uh, uh, Knights of Arabia or something like that. I think this is also a storytelling telling game. But as I said, um, I think that it's a pretty, pretty different from anything that, that we ever played. So I don't know anything about Slavic mythology, folklore, fairy tales, any of that, but I found the game really interesting because of how it's introducing all these educational things about this culture that, again, I know nothing about. Uh, so I know you guys also have a bunch of miniatures that are part of this game, and those are all very uh, important to the mythology and the mythological aspects of it. Can you show us the miniatures and kind of talk to us about what they are and what they mean to your culture? Yes, uh, that was, as I said, one of the most important encounters from my side uh, uh, with uh, the 3D modeler sculpture, uh, uh, Sasha Ristich Krieger, which is maybe 
uh, one of the best uh, in terms of uh, artistic and uh, certainly best when it comes to uh, knowledge and uh, passion about Slavic mythology. And that what made this combination very good. He made the first figure, and that is Lesnik. I don't know is, if you can see it well. So it's like tree, like figure, and he's protector of the forest and all the being in the forest. And if you are deeper in the forest, he's stronger and bigger. If he's uh, near the end of the forest, he becomes small and weak. So this is, as I said, Lesnik, it's one of 29 miniatures and all will be like this in gray. So you can paint it by your own or use it in another game, which is uh, terrific. And I want to show you the Radghost. It's painted by Giraldes. So we wanted to get it very, very beautiful because of everything that you could guess. Uh, about this god. Uh, if you see, I, I'm not sure, there is apples down there and there is bread in his uh, hand. I was speaking about god of hospitality and he has the face that actually looks like lion's face. So basically very strange and you see that it's very old and if you, uh, a symbolism, and if you go at uh, the quality of this camera is not that good. His uh, protection that is made it looks like that is made of leaves and there is a story that, that includes his court which is very very important thing and I'd let you guys investigate why and how and actually we discover later that Radgos we didn't know that is uh, extremely important in the uh, Czech Republic so they have a big monument there and uh, real forest around that so they, they, they were, oh, you, you made a game about this forest. And I think not exactly, but turns out that it is. So yes. It seems like you just learned so much about your own culture for making this game as well. Yes. And uh, the, the thing that I was sure on the beginning is that all mythologies, Greek, Norse, they are wonderful and different. But in the base of them, there is archety uh, archetypical things about human nature that human needs to explain to themselves. They, they need to somehow visualize and explain to the others what is and can be and why it is. So a lot of that is everywhere in every mythology on that base level the same. So you can uh, very easily relate to any mythology, but the representation are so wonderfully dif different that it's always a pleasure to meet a new mythology and learn something from there. It's a very, very interesting set of folklore and set of mythology, uh, you know, which again, I think a lot of our viewers probably don't know much about either. So I'm excited to learn more about that. And uh, again, the game itself just looks like it's a very good, interesting concept. Uh, it's a very simple, straightforward idea, but it's put together in just a very interesting way that's going to make every time you play it a different experience. So I just like so many different things about it. Thank you very much and kind words. One of the things that uh, that uh, was also very, very hard to, to, to solve uh, is to simulate it uh, being lost in the forest. Because, yeah. you know, in your forest, everything looks familiar and every track looks like a right one. And then you end up uh, going in the circle and so on and so on. And we find out that using dice uh, uh, was perfect for that. So we have the dice, which... Uh, actually is with numbers and it actually says how fast you are progressing and you have dice for direction which tells you on next uh, fork or joint or crossroad do you uh, have the opportunity to choose by yourself where are you going or the dice tell you you will go left so basically you get that uh, enough of your freedom to choose what is happening but enough randomness to simulate the thing that you are in unknown forest and you tend to go in the circle. And of course, we added a lot of layers like uh, abilities and companions that can affect your ability to, or, uh, to find the right way or to completely get uh, that level of ability that you don't use the direction dice a anymore. So, but as in any good fairy tale, you will have to do something to, to get to that point. And not everything will gain you uh, 
good uh, results. So sometimes you gain something which actually is bad, but you're not sure that un until you get it. So it's interesting. One of the things that I found out that uh, people didn't expect, and maybe it will be interesting for your viewers also, uh, there is that aspect of helping other in the forest, other beings, other animals, and so on. You don't have to help it. You can just move by your business. I'm going to save the children. I don't care for this hurt animal. She, she, it can tend to itself. You can enter the situation where uh, you get some kind of gift, but you draw that gift for the red uh, deck. There is nine decks and red deck is gifts that you get from helping others. So in that deck, actually, I found out that many reviewers missed that. So you help, for example, uh, Sparrow. And you should take the card which has uh, titled Sparrow and drawn the Sparrow. What you get is on another side. The, the trick is that there is more Sparrows in the red deck. So you don't know what you will get. Even if you draw the Sparrow, that doesn't mean that in the next game you, you will gain the same thing. So sometimes you will gain something, sometimes you will not gain anything, and sometimes something bad can happen because you help somebody. Like in real life, sometimes you do yeah. something from the very good intention and that turns out to be not that good idea. Yeah, it's a great concept from top to bottom, and I just you know love everything about this game. So for people who are watching this video today and want to learn more about the Forest of Rod Ghost board game, where can they go to follow you guys and potentially be one of the Kickstarters? Our own uh, website and Facebook group. Facebook group uh, is maybe the, with most detailed information. Website is also great, great resource. Uh, also, they can go on Kickstarter to hit that notify me button, which means a lot to us. And thank you for mentioning this because I want to say one, one very important thing. If there were no feedback from the people from the beginning of the game to, to today. Uh, we couldn't make this. This is joint effort of many, many people that didn't end it like uh, going through whole journey, but has contributed a lot. Also, all the people that joined the group and give us uh, from the negative to positive feedback or anything that Mm, signal that they care about something that we made uh, helped us to get to this point. And I want this to say to anybody who thinks about making the game and going to the Kickstarter, it's a roller coaster ride. It's much harder than it looks like. And I had a lot of experience. I'm software engineer with the project. So I know how project can make itself bigger and so on. But this making a board game you deal with the artist, you deal with the technical people, you deal with the, a lot of things that you will never think before. Unbelievably complex. I think that maybe the, be director of movie or staging the opera is more complex because also you have all those things, but multiply it with the money, which is much bigger with the responsibility and everything. But I, I really, really from my uh, standpoint can say next. I, I am not regretting for not giving up. I'm so happy that we are here where we are, that we have chance. We are very thankful for this chance. And even if we don't succeed on Kickstarter, it, it was worth of every second that we invested in here. So thank you for the time and chance to speak about this. As you see, I can speak about this hours and hours. Sorry for this. Uh, nothing to be sorry about. You're very passionate about what you do, and that's important. We want to see that. And again, it's so great. You guys have such a great story. That's a family-made project. You've been testing it with friends and families. You've been listening to the fan feedback, which you can see. I mean, you can easily see how much feedback and how many things you've changed to make the game a better experience. So, you know, very well done job on that. And just to let everybody know, the Kickstarter has just launched on February 10th. So that was just a few days before this video has been uploaded and it's gonna be live for only 21 days. So if you're interested in this game, I recommend you head over to Kickstarter right now. We're gonna have a link for that in the description of this video. Head over to Kickstarter, take a look at it and consider please supporting this project, especially in the first week because that's one of the most important weeks for any Kickstarter project. So please take a look at Kickstarter, Forest of Rod Ghost, great game. Uh, Yvonne, it's so great meeting you. I'm so glad we got to talk today. Uh, I really wish you most success so with the game. I'm so grateful for, for this opportunity. 
So Yvonne, to your entire family, again, good luck with this project. And I look forward to seeing this game next year in plenty of stores in the USA as well. Thank you very much. I, I also hope that that will be the case. Well, next year, let's get you and your family to New York Toy Fair at the Javits Center. I hope you, we will see there. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. So thank you, Yvonne. So that's the Forest of Rod Ghost board game. Don't forget, check out Kickstarter. All the links will be in the description below. So everybody who's watching, hang on, though, because there's more Nerd News Today Toy Fair 2021 coming right up.